Okay, so we're going to solve this system of simultaneous equations following a really interesting method where instead of actually working with these equations directly, we're going to construct a cubic equation which has its three solutions, or the solutions x, y, and z to these three equations. So what do we mean by this? Well, let's imagine we have a cubic equation equal to zero. So if we imagine we've got a cubic equation in a different variable, we can call this w, and if it had x, y, and z as its solutions, we'd have w minus x times w minus y times w minus z equals zero. So this would have x, y, and z as its roots. And then if you imagine we expand the brackets here, we'd have first of all w cubed, and then for our w squared terms, w squared multiplied by negative x, negative y, and negative z. So we'd have a factor of negative x plus y plus z times w squared. And then for our w to the power of 1 term, we've got the positive of these product pairs x, y, and y, z. So we'd have plus x, y, plus y, z, and finally plus x, z as well, multiplied by w. And then our linear constant term is just negative x times y times z, so minus x, y, z. So this is all still equal to zero. So how is this related to our system of simultaneous equations? Well, at the moment we've just got a cubic equation, but we don't really know much about it. But you can see here we've got x plus y plus z, and we know that x plus y plus z is actually just equal to 1. So then we can simplify all of this to become, we know our cubic that we're looking for is w cubed, minus w squared plus, we've got all of these pairs, x, y plus y, z plus x, z times w and minus x, y, z. And then to focus on this next term, the sum of all the pairs, x, y plus y, z plus x, z, let's just have a look at what happens when you expand a bracket x plus y plus z all squared. So when we expand all of this, we get first of all of the squared terms, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, but then we also get two lots of all of the pairs, x times y, y times z, and x times z. So if you were to expand this out by hand, you would get this, 2 times xy plus yz plus xz. And then you can see here that x plus y plus z, we know this is just equal to 1, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared, we know from the question, is equal to 5. So then we've got a much simpler 1 is equal to 5 plus 2 times the sum of these pairs, x, y plus y, z plus x, z, and then we can subtract 5, divide by 2, we see that the sum of all of these pairs then is negative 2, so we can substitute this into our cubic equation we're looking for as well. So then we're going to end up with w cubed minus w squared, and then here the sum of all of these is just negative 2, so take away 2 times w, take away x, y, z, is equal to zero. So you can see we're getting closer and closer to working out what our desired cubic equation is. The question is now how do we find the value of x, y, z? So you could do this by taking x plus y plus z all cubed and you could get out an x, y, z term. This turns out to be quite complicated to do this way. So we'll clear some board space and I'll show you there's a quite a neat shortcut way of doing this to find a nice expression for x, y, z in terms of all of these values that we actually already know. Now the trick here is to use the fact that x, y, and z are supposed to be roots of this cubic equation. So, for example, if we substitute x into this equation in place of w, we should get x cubed minus x squared minus 2x minus x, y, z should be equal to 0, just replacing the w's by x's there. We can do the same with y and z, because y and z are supposed to be roots of this equation as well. So we get y cubed minus y squared minus 2y minus xyz equals 0, and similarly substituting in z we get the same equation just with z in place of w. And something really interesting happens now if we consider these as three simultaneous equations. So if you imagine adding the left hand side of all of these equations together, so first of all we would have x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, and we actually know that this is just equal to 7. And then we take away x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and we know that this is just 5, so it's 7 take away 5, and then here we take away two lots of x, y, and z. So when we add all of this together, we've really got take away two lots of x plus y plus z. We know x plus y plus z is just 1, so take away 2 plus 1. And finally here, when we add all of these together, we have three lots of x, y, z, so take away 
3xyz is all equal to 0. But then here, because we've got 7 minus 5 minus 2, this is actually just 0. So we get 0 equals 3xyz. So xyz, this product, is actually just equal to 0. So if we've got xyz equals 0, we've now actually determined what our cubic equation is that we're looking for. So our cubic equation is w cubed minus w squared minus 2w and then just minus 0 is equal to 0. So this is quite a nice cubic then. We can just factor out a w and we get a quadratic w squared minus w minus 2 equals 0. And we can solve the quadratic just by factorising this. So w minus 2 and w plus 1 equals 0. So then our three roots of this cubic equation are, first of all, we've got w is 0, we've got w is 2, and we've got w is negative 1. So we'll write them in order, negative 1, 0, and 2. And remember, the whole point of setting up this cubic equation is that this cubic equation has roots x, y, and z. So we don't know which one of these values is x, we don't know which one is y, we don't know which is z, because if you just look at each of these equations, it doesn't really make a difference. You could swap your x and y values, swap your z value for either of the others, and it would still work. So we can say that x, y, and z are equal to negative 1, 0, and 2. We could perhaps express this just as a set. The set x, y, and z equals the set negative 1, 0, 2, just to express this idea that x, y, and z are these three numbers, but they can be in any order as long as you include each of these numbers exactly once. So then we've solved this system of equations using this cubic method.